Good morning. Um, my name is Kay Brooks. I'm the founder of TenHomeEd.com, which is a statewide networking organization for homeschoolers. Uh, uh, I guess you were in a meeting earlier when we were talking about uh, smoke detectors and I, saving yes, I did, lives. Yeah. Representative and Turner's so, yes. so we're taking very seriously this committee does on saving lives and making sure somebody don't get burned up. And uh, and so so when we make this decision in here in this committee uh, uh, that we're going to to uh, take the the code that applies to a church or, or applies to whatever versus a school. Then, then we are, uh, in, a, in a way, taking on some exposure. That's true. Uh, and and uh, so I guess uh, our chairman here made the comment, you know, how many children are going to be in there? If we got a packed house uh, of students, you know, versus uh, you know, eight or ten people getting together to get a certain subject matter taught to them, uh, can you help us? Uh, what's the experience you've seen of the numbers of people getting together? Uh, and in a homeschool environment. Well, it, it can vary tremendously. Um, from my point of view, having listened to this conversation go on for the last two years, having attended a meeting uh, last year at this time that was held by Representative Rowland and Representative Mike Bell with the fire marshal people there, um, there is definitely some um, misunderstanding about what these tutorials do. The fire marshal's office tends to just see education uh, as a brick-and-mortar school that meets 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Uh, and that's not the case with these, situa these uh, tutorials and cooperatives. Um, usually they meet just a couple of times a, year, uh, couple of times a week. Uh, if they meet five days a week, it's different children all the time. The, the big thing that seems to be overlooked is usually parents are there. They're immediately participatory. You know, they are uh, there to oversee their own children. It's not like a school where you suddenly you have, you know, hundreds of students and a couple of dozen faculty to usher these children in a, an emergency situation. Uh, that's not the case. Um, so what happens is, what has been happening is, these tutorials have been meeting for, um, homeschooling's been uh, legal in Tennessee for some 25 years, and they've been meeting for quite a while, and suddenly in the last couple of years, fire marshal or codes officials have been showing up saying you need to shut down because you're violating uh, the codes, the occupancy code for this uh, building and, and their response is, but we're not, that's not what this building is really doing. They have generously, frequently uh, given that space because uh, they feel like that's a ministry to the community, part of their mission statement. Um, it may be that the majority of those children are families that attend that church, and it may be that, you know, the facility is rented on a regular basis to community groups of whatever kind, a yoga class, the Boy Scouts, whatever. And, and that's, I want you to keep that in mind. This could eventually affect those uh, other community groups too. So okay. um, I appreciate the protection being offered for homeschoolers, but I see further out, you know, when you're in small communities, you don't have very many facilities for groups of people to get together. It's easy here in Nashville or Chattanooga, you know, to find a hall to rent. But in smaller uh, communities, you know, churches are pretty much it too frequently. So okay. um, does that answer your yeah, question? Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Representative Picardis. He asked part of the question he asked, and you gave him the answer that it varies. But what would you, what do you say the smallest type group would be looking at, and the largest group? The, really, the largest group is what we're interested in. Right. What kind of numbers are we talking about? Because there is a concern if we're going to do this, and we're going to end up putting hundreds of students in a place. There's a lot of difference between doing that and putting 30 students in an environment, and that's what we really need to know. Right. And I think part of the problem with nailing down that number is it changes from semester to semester. It depends upon what the tutorial is offering at that season. And it's, there's a lot of flow in all of that. Uh, so we can't nail it down firmly. But there are some groups, especially in, in our larger cities, that probably do have, you know, more than 100 students meeting there a couple of times a week on a regular basis throughout the school year. And, again, I would just emphasize that parents are there. Uh, they understand the facilities. You know, it's not you, you kind of have to pull it out of that schoolhouse mentality. You know, if, if there's a safety issue, these parents are there, they're familiar with the situation, you know, they can help usher those children out. The, uh, and, and you bring up a good point, and I, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking out loud before the committee, of course, we're ultimately going to have this bill one more week, and I don't want to inconvenience you to have to come back, but it's all right. it seems like the, the way that we could get beyond, say, 25 or 30 people and be consistent in doing that 
is if we put a ratio between adults versus student in this environment, and and then then we got to play with that number, and it might be uh, one to ten or one to five. We need to make sure we can put something in this thing that makes it truly different from a school setting. Well, and and we. I understand that. And so parents come back and say, well, what's the difference between that and a Sylvan Learning Center, you know, where they will have lots of students coming and going and very I'm few. I'm pretty sure you're saying the Sylvan Learning Center doesn't meet school standards? Yeah. They don't meet them? No. I wonder what kind of student body they have in there at a given time. Well, that's What a good kind question. of student-teacher ratio do they have? I've never been in one. I'm <laughs> just asking out of ignorance. My experience is you know, with, with homeschooling itself, with those um, those situations. But they're frequently in commercial districts, which are not, you know, that's neither church nor <laughs> education. So. But if it's, but uh, I, I, in my mind, I envision a Sylvan Learning Center where it's really a low student-teacher ratio, maybe two or three students to a teacher. And that's an, a big issue for you, and I understand that, and I think that's a legitimate uh, point of discussion. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh Representative DeBerry, do you have something you want to ask? Go ahead. Just a quick clarification, Mr. Chairman. I make sure I understand the bill, I, even though I know, uh, Representative Camper, we're going to have it for another week. Is the premise of the bill that whatever the UNO is of that building, that whatever standards are required of that particular building, that that building uh, meet all codes? If, if it's a church building, if that's its use and occupancy, that all applicable codes be met? Uh, by that building is is that part of the bill without objection we'll go back into session and let representative camp Peel answer that question yes they would have to meet say they're a church of 500 person church they would have to meet the standards of a 500 person church say they're a 200 person church they would have to meet the fire and safety standards of a 200 whatever person church okay and i heard them mention home a a person you, you mentioned a personal home yes a lot of people do home schools in their home okay and they would have to meet the fire and safety standards of a home still and the, and the codes of a home as well. Representative Montgomery. I think, uh, Representative, uh, what, what the question here is, is we've got a church and it meets all the codes of a church. But yet we've got some homeschool children coming into that church to be taught. Now, does it need to be elevated to meet the codes of a school in order to do that or leave it uh, at, at the code of a church? That's, that's the question. I tell you, we're, we're, that's we're, pretty much it. this bill is going to be here before us next week. Why don't we, without objection, why don't we roll the bill to next week? We're going to hold it. Y'all get your questions together. And, and so I would be can. happy to, to work with any of you during the week or something like that. And maybe we can come up with a, another better amendment to, to make it palatable for everyone. Okay. I think, I think there are some concerns, as you have heard. And we want to do the right thing for uh, – with the bill, and uh, we'll have it another week by our policy. It's nothing That's against fine. your bill. Okay, without objection. We'll